Hey everybody, happy Monday. Uh, Friday, we didn't trade. There was a uh, quad witch. I didn't want to play in it. Um, <clears throat> failed to come out and announce that Thursday. Uh, late late Thursday, I re realized that. But I'm playing a, a playback here. I just started doing this, so bear with me as far as being able to record and, uh, record back what I was looking for today. Uh, again, just looking at where price is relative to value. Okay, when we talk about the SVP, Okay, the, the, the uh, session volume range, the range volume profile. Um, when I look at areas to buy uh, that are cheap, scalping maybe five points on the ES, risk five, bank five, uh, and then also where's our entries and potential exits when the order book shows us. So I'm going to slow this down even more. This was the open. I wish this recorded the actual trades we took. So as I think as we came back, back down here into the 59, uh, we took a trade. I'm going to start recording these in a different manner. You got to also slow this down. Um, but we can see that, um, again, using book map, the current order book, relative to also what's go going on already, we can take high probability trades. Now, how you manage your trades, what, what you trade point-wise, that's all up to you. I pulled up my old footprint chart, and what I've been doing with that also is... Um, <clears throat> All this is all before the fact here, before the market opened. Back this up here at 8.30. We were trading all through here, but we had a breakout right at the open. And we started creating more volume here. So this was like around our first trade here at 3.877, around 9 a.m. I'll see if I can put that back here uh, at some point here. Let's fast forward to do a little bit more at 9.01. I want to say that's where we took one of our first, you know, my fault for not logging it in. The markets were very strong on the open, so we wanted to wait for the best, best possible deals, okay? Especially when we're going short scalping, um, five point, anything under like, I guess, 10 point these days on ES. Uh, markets were still a little bit too expensive here, so we didn't want to chase anything in. We waited, waited, waited till the same point around 901, and I'll show you guys this volume cluster that you see down here in 7577 point. Also came down here to this close to the VWAP. We saw this liquidity coming here. Let me slow this down. Let me pause. What happened here is uh, I think we took our first trade here because, uh, yeah, okay, we had low volume nodes and uh, price was very strong. CVP was already up like 5,000 over on the sellers. And so we took a, tr a trade up into here from here up five point. I wish it recorded the actual um, orders itself that we did here. I finally got the Apex API, so we're able to use Global Plus. Really awesome feature, guys. One-click trading. But you leave this is the spot we waited around the 70s, 73s. Price went against us a little bit, and then we got our first five point. When then we did another five point run relative again. Price had to hold up in this spot, being that we were longs here on. This, uh, you know, obviously the day was very strong, very bullish. Eight thousand contracts over the sellers. We took a high probability trade here. Look at the order book. You know, we're able to do this live here again soon. And that's what I'll come out here and do. But wanted to get out a video to you guys, let you know that I ain't disappeared. <laughs> Friday wasn't a good day to trade. Stayed away from it. Today we did almost 10 points on, uh, technically it was actually three trades because there was a, a small trade I took testing the API during Asian session yesterday. It was just under one point. Um, so really it took about eight points today. Um, I have targets set uh, for five and five right now as for protection, 20 ticks each on the brackets here for the one click trading. And, uh, and then I have the API on through the, uh, through, uh, rhythmic R Trader Pro. And so, um, this was a spot I believe we took along here. I don't have it logged guys. And then there was another trade a little bit like later into the, uh, before the initial balance happened. And this, this was a good trade here just to take that pop. You have that big volume here holding up. And you had the order book strong at 70s. They weren't going to let go. And this was a, even a nice actual longer term, longer range, uh, I think, potential for a 10 point run, if I'm not mistaken. I scalped it. Um, let me speed it up here a bit. You can catch this thing, how it just blows up. Um, over here. I think it tests one more time and then it goes. And there was some point there where I think we, we just took off, off of that. Uh, this is where it took off on me. Um, could have been a nice one, one hit trade right there and be done. And then we went for one more at some point. Let me slow this back down. 
again, just using kind of what I've been talking about. So here we got a little bit expensive. It was around, uh, what was it, like 916 or so. Um, price kept testing up here. But we knew, again, if we got down into this zone, this is areas we're going to want to go long. So either we took one there or we waited at that time too. Profile wasn't built out here. Oh, God, where was I? My other trade was here off 94. Okay, where a lot of people were getting stopped out at, at uh, almost 10 o'clock. I remember this too clearly uh, there was several stops um, that came through a lot of huge stops so people were already trying to fade that zone I mean fast forward around 10 if I'm not mistaken again if I log these and do this the right way guys I'll be able to come out here and, and do them like uh, not look as unprofessional on, on these spots and I can show them to you as they happen but it was close to the top of the hour here where we had massive stops. There was one big stop out there at 9.30. I think this was potentially here the next one that comes in. Um, another big stop around here popped in. But I think it was more towards the top of the hour because we knew they were just going to pop this out and break out again. Just constantly they sat there and just stopped out these folks. Right Here was the two big stops I was talking about. Almost 10 a.m. Let me slow this guy down. And again, didn't want to really take a fade trade because the strength of this market is, uh, I've learned and I got burned too many times. So I think it was coming into here, into this zone. Wanted to catch something at 9.5. Let me go ahead and pause this. And on the footprint chart, in the 10,000 volume footprint chart, around, it was here. Yeah, 10. It was a little bit of a higher risk trade because if I was wrong, we were going to bail out back down all the way into these 87s. But I needed to be done. There was a trade here, I believe this was the long um that i took on oh, 950 yeah once again these stops happened a couple of time here because these guys wanted to really fade in early of course the market did it after i was done by this point but i took a short little scalp here for another like four points approximately and you'll see the pop happen here if i didn't miscalculate this um on the fly kind of like a recording i'm doing you'll get another big pop out here and i believe it was another big stop for people um Shoot, that is where my recording stopped, yeah. So I was done. Um, at what point did I grab that? Was some was actually this right here. So it was about this four points. Once I saw this volume come in right here and the volume note up here, I didn't think I'd get the whole amount. It did end up, I think, bailing up there after the fact, but I, I got what I wanted for the day and took off. Ended up being after commissions just under... Uh, about 450 bucks, you know, so uh, it was eight points in this morning and then one point almost last night when I was testing the API. But again, this is all I'm doing and this is on fast forward, guys, ladies and gentlemen, mostly gentlemen, because I don't see a big wave of women coming around. But to all you all, um, we're looking at where volumes traded before. We're keeping in mind the strength of the day, obviously coming in and looking at real quick at the macro on the daily chart and seeing that we've been bouncing off of like a... a a weekly kind of a swing line right and so in the morning already we had hit down here and we were testing up on the two hour chart we were seeing that as well okay and we do have some naked POCs left behind here with nothing to the downside so um kind of uh looking like at this point like uh well we took what we needed for the day right but looking at this point like you know long term uh, look out in the week for these levels to be hit. We were waiting for that 4,000 POC to be hit on last week. Didn't happen. Uh, all this quad witch stuff happened, sold back off, and now expect that to, to be hit eventually. It doesn't take too long for these things to get revisited. Okay, um, and that's about it, really. So I just want to update you guys that I'm still here working, getting the hang of things. Uh, I do trade better, uh, be honest, when I'm not live. Um, <laughs> show me a trader that can do that and be talking loud as he's showing things and you'll find a guy that knows how to trade that can miss a lot of trades uh, that does happen unfortunately but part of our business too is we like to let you guys be aware of these amazing products that are available okay that um, can actually give you a good edge in the markets and you don't have to know too much too much of what's going on you don't need too much indications either you just got to know how to kind of look at this book and read it really relative with high probability trade, you know, with the session profile and things like this. So I've been zooming in and, and doing the scalp method on ES on the two minute time slice, really. Um, pretty much on this one. So this is like about a two minute time slice. If you break up each one of these slices, it's a candlestick. 
and we're looking at every single nanosecond of what's going on in there relative to the current order book, the ever-changing current modern, uh, you know, live order book with what's already occurred. That's why I like to use these classic columns, you know, the COB and the SVP, current order book relative to what's already occurred. And the visualization helps a lot, helps kind of, uh, you know, illustrate for me high probability moves, especially trying to scalp the ES these days. So that's kind of like the day I had. I'll be back around. I just wanted to update you guys. Viper is here. We ain't gone nowhere. Got to take off here for a couple appointments. I'll be back tomorrow. If I hit this live, I will be on. If I don't, I'll do a, another market kind of update. Then I'll slow the process down and show you guys exactly what I was looking for. It's real, real common concepts in trading, which has to do with, uh, you know, value. You know, what's expensive versus what's not, uh, or what's cheap. And, um, classic kind of a thing that I do, I did today was bring up my, uh, footprint charts so even looking right now live you know same thing here we saw this thing test a few times relative to the overnight session we found good support right around this view app so now this is later in the morning almost lunch can we find this is where price becomes fair right this is why it gets hard okay we have expensive we have cheap down here cheap value okay and then we have fair. And so right now we're kind of at this fair price. And this is where people can get chopped up. You got to be careful. Try to see if you can grab the edges. And even on a high trending day, you know, if it's a high continuous upflow day or downflow day, when you come in in the trenches, then using book map, you can find those nice pullbacks um, relative to, um, you know, your time slice. Okay. Like how much risk you can handle to your reward, what you're looking forward to doing. Everybody have a good rest of your day. Uh, thanks for watching and following. We appreciate the uh, loyalty and the followings. And by the way, you know, um, there's links below that I'll put, you know, you can get specials on these things. If you guys already have a rhythmic data plan, you know, or you have one of those funded trader programs, you can API that into, um, your book map and make it very affordable. Well, just get, get yourself a three month trial on the global plus. Click my link below. Get yourself a special three month package. Give yourself a few months with this. We'll make another video if you'd like, uh, showing you how to API your funded trader program rhythmic data in here, which is what I'm using today now. You know, Bookmap has given me the gift of, uh, of a rhythmic data package at the same time too. I have, um, tied this whole thing to Apex. So if you have Global Plus, you can trade right off these charts. Okay. Sim it for a few days. And you'll see how wonderful it is that now what happens is I don't have to focus on looking at price here, moving my mouse over to another monitor and clicking on a Ninja Trader Dome or something. So I'm just managing everything in one place while I have my R Trader open just to manage in case there's any kind of emergencies or anything like this. And so really, really uh, game changing. I uh, highly recommend you guys look at a combination of these services and uh, message me if you need any help. Um, sorry for the speed up here today. I got a jam, but I wanted to reach out to you all, to all the Vipers, and just know that there is something really good here you can do. It's going to be life-changing on your trading, okay? Of course, all disclosures in place and all that stuff. Everyone have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow.